invite you this morning to join us for our scripture lessons. The first lesson was from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and then verse 11 through 12. And that could be found on page 1078 of your two Bibles. 2 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 4. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of everyone of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. And then verses 11 through 12. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And our gospel message this morning comes to us from Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 10, and that can be found on page 956 and 957 of your pew Bibles. Luke 19, 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the Word of God for the children of God. And we respond by saying, Thanks for Christ. It's going to start. It's going to start with me. Some boys had got gathered in a schoolyard one day and they were bragging about their dads. The first one says, my dad scribbles a few lines down on a piece of paper, calls it a poem, and folks give him 50 bucks for it. The second says, ha, that's nothing. My dad scribbles some words down on a page, they call it a song, and they give him an honor box. I got you both beat, the third boy said. My dad scribbles a few words down on a piece of paper, calls it a sermon, and it takes eight people to collect the money. <laughs> well, I got them all beat. Because my father put some words in a book. Amen. And thousands of people are saved by reading those words. Amen. But sadly, not all who read those words understand that. Sometimes it's because we're just kind of rushing to get to that last page in our reading assignment. Or something of this world kind of clouds our focus and we don't really understand what we're reading. But those words matter. This book matters. Let's pray and explore how a little word can help us understand the true nature and mission of Christ. Still our hearts, Lord. Ease our minds. 
help us in this moment to understand what your holy scriptures share with us. Let us set aside the things of this world so that we can truly focus on what you call us to hear. Help us in these moments to really understand what you want out of us in this thing called life. Ease our minds, God, for our sweet sister, Virginia. Give us a sense of peace in the midst of all of this. And be with her and her family. Be with this church. Bless us all. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. In today's scripture, there is a puzzling word that is fixed obscurely in the middle of the passage. And if we examine only the obvious tenets of that scripture, the obvious things, the concept of God's grace to all, we may miss that little word. Let me read that section again for you. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house. Notice in that scripture that Jesus didn't say, I want to stay. He didn't say, come on, buddy, let's go to your place and eat. No, he said, I must stay. There's a few reasons that Christ chose that word. First, Zacchaeus wanted to know Jesus. The New Revised Standard Version puts it this way. He was trying to see who Jesus was. The New Living Translation says he tried to get a look at Jesus. And the message says he wanted desperately to see Jesus. But I think the King James Version got it as close as possible to the original context when it says... He sought to see Jesus, who he was. Zacchaeus had an inkling, you see, that this teacher was more than just some ordinary rabbi wandering through the countryside. He had some form of a conversion experience because in the scriptures today, he states that he is willing to give half of what he makes to the poor. And if he has wronged anyone, he will give them back four times the amount. And that's not normal for a tax collector, amen? amen? And this was no ordinary tax collector. This was the chief of the tax collectors in that region. He had swindled with the best of them. But he had a change of heart. And because of that, Jesus had to reveal to him who he was. Amen. It seems to be almost like an unwritten thing in the Bible, right? If you get your head right and you get your heart right, and you really, really desire to know God, He's going to show up. Amen. Amen. We hear constantly through the Bible the phrase, He walked with God. Remember that? Adam in Genesis talks about how while Adam's mind was right, sin hadn't been introduced yet. He walked with God. The Bible actually tells us in the cool, but after sin enters the picture, right? The strolls stopped. Or what about Israel? Remember in Exodus when they had left Egypt and their minds and their hearts were fixed on knowing God? They weren't corrupted yet? They walked by a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire at night. And Mount Sinai, right? Thunder would shake the mountain. Lightning would light up the sky. Because the people wanted to know God. And holy smoke would descend upon the tabernacle to be with the people. Moses. What about Moses? You recall him in Exodus 34 verses 5 through 7? God actually came down and stood on the earth and passed 
before Moses because his heart and his head were in the right place and he desired to know his creator. Leviticus 26 speaks to us about how you and I can experience that too. If we are obedient, verse 11 tells us, God will establish his dwelling place among us. And verse 12 tells us that he will walk among us. He will be our God. And we will be his people. Somebody's car alarm. Zacchaeus was obedient. He had gotten his head and heart right. So Jesus must stay with him and help him to know who his God was. The second thing that Jesus that caused Jesus to stay with Zacchaeus was because of God's love and his desire to be with his creation. God loves to spend time with us. Some children were once asked by their teacher what love is, and one responded, well, love is when mommy reads me my bedtime story. And she continued, true love is when she doesn't skip any pages. <laughs> God doesn't skip any pages with us. Because He truly loves us. The Hebrew word for that type of love is hesed. H-E-S-E-D. And it's best thought of as a covenant style of love. Or a love that's based solely on loyalty. And why wouldn't He love you and I in that manner? Genesis 5.1 tells us that He created us in His likeness. Jason Tusks was a 17-year-old honor student. He was very close to his mom, dad, and younger brother. He loved swimming and, and scuba diving, and one morning he decided to explore a cave in a spring near his central West Florida home. He became trapped, though, underwater. He found himself wedged in a tight spot, and he could barely wiggle his tank off. And with his diving knife, he scratched one last message before he ran out of air. The words, I love you, Mom, Dad, and Christian, were found etched in his scuba tank, a dying message of love. And any sinner, like me, can't help but feel the love in the message of that cross, because it was etched in blood. And when you and I read John 3.16, for God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. His message of love, even for us sinners, opens an opportunity for us to spend eternity with him in heaven. And all we have to do is confess with our lips that he is our Savior and believe it in our hearts. Amen. 1 John 4.15 reminds us that whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God will dwelleth in him, and he in God. Amen. Friends, Jesus must stay with Zacchaeus because he loves his creation and he wants to be with us. And last but not least, Jesus must stay with Zacchaeus because God has Jeremiah 29, 11 states, For I know the plans I have for you. God has a plan for each of us. Amen. Zacchaeus was a leader in that chosen profession, and his conversion and faith would be a powerful instrument to illustrate just how much God loves us. Philippians 2, 10 through 11 shares this. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But how is that going to happen if common people like Zacchaeus and you and me don't have Jesus stay with us for a while? Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ had to show folks that he was the real deal. Amen. Humans by nature are skeptical things. But while others were fussing about how he had spent time and ate with sinners, as the Bible says, while some were trying to defame who this Jesus was, the Son of God was getting busy. You can't forgive sin without knowing and understanding it. 
and knowing how it impacts people. I believe that the strongest faith is the one tested in the fires of life. The Christian who holds tightest to the tenets of God is often the vilest sinner that realizes he or she was saved by grace. The loudest voice is usually the one who knows that the only way they would be free from sin is through God's Amen. grace. Amen. When Polycarp, an early martyr of the church, was brought into the Roman arena, he was bowed to this pool in the center where everybody could see him. Wood was piled shoulder high around this old man. The Roman proconsul urged the 86-year-old Polycarp, Reproach your God, and I will set you free. <clears throat> old Polycarp shot him back. For 80 and 6 years have I served him, and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king and my savior? Bring on whatever you want. The pyre was lit. The flames engulfed the area around the old man. The crowd that was present that day swore up and down that they smelled something like frankincense in the arena as those flames formed an arch above old Polycarp's head. When the soldiers saw that he couldn't be consumed by flames, they sent a man in, and Polycarp was stabbed with a knife. A dove flew out of the center of those flames. And the people reported that the fire was actually extinguished by all the blood that issued from Polycarp's body. Because of one man, thousands would see the power of God that day and come to faith in him. Because of Zacchaeus, thousands who passed through the trade center of Jericho would know how much God cared for sinners like us. They would know that the Son of God came to seek and save that which was lost. And even in our worst moments, God loves us Amen. more than we can fathom. Amen. Jesus must stay with Zacchaeus because God has a plan to share the redeeming knowledge of who he is and what he can do. The must in the middle this morning symbolizes, friends, that Jesus loved you so much, he was compelled by that love to become flesh, to live a sinless life, to carry a cross and die, so that you could experience eternal life. And in the midst of your life, <clears throat> Jesus shares that there are a few musts for you and I as well. You must love the Lord your God Amen. with all your heart, Amen. mind, soul, Amen. and strength. You must Amen. love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And you must do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Amen. For if you desire something of God, then you must. Peace. Amen. 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 If you would rise as you are able.